a few days ago, somebody who had seen my video on scanning slides using ViewScan and the Nikon Film Scanner wrote to me to ask if I had an experience using the raw file output instead of outputting the files from ViewScan as a TIFF file. And I wrote back to him and told him I'd never tried it before, but I would try to uh, play around with it and see if I could figure it out because he was having trouble making it work right. So here's my results, and this is how to make it work well. Um, first of all, to set up view scan, this is going to be a lot like it was in the slide scanning video. Um, I'm using the Nikon LS8000 film scanner. Um, task is scan to file. Media type, you can choose either image or slide film. I haven't seen much difference between the two, so it doesn't really seem to matter on the current views, versions of ViewScan which one you choose. On the earlier versions of ViewScan, there was a difference in the appearance of the image between those two choices. Um, you can try them both and see what you like better. Um, I'm only going to scan one slide here, so I've got batch scan turned off. Um, I have another tutorial on how to use batch scanning if you want to do that, if you have multiple slides to scan at the same time. I've got it set up frame number one because I've got the slides in the first um, first position in the slide holder. Um, preview resolution needs to be set at 667 dpi. That gives you a fast preview, but one that still looks good on screen. Scan resolution should be set at 4000 dpi. That's the maximum resolution the scanner has. Whatever your scanner's maximum resolution is, that's what you should set for it. I know that if you scan at a lower resolution, it makes the scans happen faster, but they also give you a smaller file that can't be printed as large. And even if you think, well, I'm not going to print this picture huge, I'm only going to make, you know, a 5x7 or an 8x10 of it or whatever, I don't need 4000 DPI resolution. I used to think like that when I first got the scanner, which I've had now for 15 years or so. So the first, uh, I don't know, probably first hundred or so pictures I scanned with it, I scanned at lower resolution thinking that I'm not going to make huge prints. Well, the problem is eventually somebody um, came to me and says, I want to buy a print. Uh, can you sell me a 16 by 20 print? Yeah, but I had to rescan the film because I hadn't scanned it at high enough resolution the first time. And that meant doing all the work to scan again, all the work to edit the picture in Photoshop, all the dodging and burning and anything else I'd done to it all had to be totally redone because I had tried to save a few minutes in scan time and scanned the picture at, at too low a resolution to begin with. So I always recommend scanning at the highest resolution. When you make smaller prints, you can resize it down with no trouble. But if you have a small file and you need to make bigger prints that can support, you can't size it up without losing quality. You've got to rescan it. And it's not worth trying to save a few minutes in scanning time and then end up having to do that later. Um, okay, rotation I've got set at none because this picture is a horizontal one and the film, the film holder for the scanner holds the slides in a horizontal position. You could use the rotation if you're going to scan a vertical slide. Um, autofocus I have set it always. Um, Um, on the Nikon 8000 scanner, you need to have it set at fine mode. Um, this scanner had a defect that was a design issue, where if you scan transparencies without using the fine mode, you would sometimes get horizontal bands across the image. Using the fine mode fixes that problem, makes the scans take a little bit longer, but it's worth it because the pictures are ruined if you end up getting those lines on it. Multi-exposure I'm not using. Um, Multi-sampling with slides that have a lot of very dark stuff in them, either because it's a dark subject matter or because the slide is underexposed, using multi-sampling can improve the image quality in the dark areas, um, but it also makes the scans a lot longer. Um, if you do two samples, that doubles the scan time. You do four samples, it quadruples the scan time. So I don't do it usually unless I have a slide that I feel can benefit from it. Um, this slide that we're going to use for our test here doesn't really need that, so I'm going to keep it at 1, and also so you don't have to sit here for 20 minutes waiting for an image to scan while you're watching this video. Um, in the filter one, I'm using the infrared clean set at light. Um, the infrared clean removes dust and scratches, and you can set different um, amounts of it to use. Heavy would be for very badly damaged slides. The problem is using the medium and the heavy settings, especially the heavy one, um, can give the image, um, it makes the image a little bit softer. It actually obscures some image detail. And so I don't use that unless I have a slide that's just in horrible condition where the loss of image detail 
is worth it considering how bad the slide would be if you didn't clean it. Um, the light setting doesn't affect image quality at all in my experience, and it does get rid of some dust and scratches, so it's it's nice to use. No matter how good you are at cleaning your slide, there's always going to be some dust spot on there you missed, so this just makes your life a little easier. Uh, the color settings. Um, I leave it at neutral. The black and white points need to both be set at zero to prevent having any light or dark tones blown out to pure white or pure black. Now sometimes you may have that happen anyway if the slide is very high in contrast, but we want to minimize that possibility in the first place by setting these at zero. The curve settings I leave at the defaults. Um, scanner color space I leave at the default. Output color space I do it. You can set this at whichever color space you prefer to work in, but I use it at WeRGB. Um, Output. Now, this is the important thing. This is this is what we're going to have to look at for doing the raw output. Those of you who've used a digital camera know that a raw file is something the digital camera produces that gives you the raw data off the sensor that you can then open up in a raw image editing program like Adobe Lightroom or or Photoshop or the software that came with your camera. And by using a raw file instead of a JPEG you can do things like adjusting color balance easier. You can adjust the white balance of the picture. You can correct exposure errors to some extent. You can lighten the shadow areas to bring detail back into them. And you can bring detail into blown out highlights to some extent using a raw file. These are things that are difficult, if not impossible, to do with a JPEG. And so the man who wrote to me who was using his scanner to scan slides and trying to use the raw output was trying to get those same benefits from a scan and he was having trouble making it work right. Well, I think I figured out what his problem was. The settings for this are not very intuitive and I had to play around with it a little bit to figure out the right settings to use to get the raw file that would actually be usable. Um, so it's in the output section here. Um, default folder is basically where you wanted to save the, the scan after it's done. Print size should be scan size, okay? Um, magnif magnification should be 100%. Um, auto file name is fine. Um, now, you're going to see choices here. You got you can choose a TIFF file, you, which is what I usually use for slide scans, but this is not going to be a RAW file. A TIFF file is not a RAW file. Um, JPEG, which I don't recommend using. PDF file, there's no, there's no point to using a PDF file for a photograph scan. That's for scanning text. Um, an index print um, is like when you go to the photo lab and you have a roll of film printed and they give you that little print that's got the little thumbnails of every picture on the roll. This is when you're doing batch scanning and view scan. It can give you a little index print of every one you scanned in that batch. We're not going to use that either. Uh, okay, raw file here. If you click that where it says raw file, you're going to see the file name it says is raw, you know, a number, and then the extension is .tif, just like a TIFF file. And I thought that was kind of odd because raw files never have the extension TIF. They're not TIFF files. Usually the extension will either be DNG, which is digital negative format, which is a file format for raw files that Adobe came up with, or it'll be a proprietary um, raw format extension like uh, Canon's digital cameras um, have a have an extension they use, Nikon's or .NEF. Um, so, um, Usually they're going to be in a, they're going to be either the DNG or they're going to be whatever your camera manufacturers chosen extension is for their raw files, and so that seemed odd to me that this raw file was getting have a TIFF extension. Now when I tried to use this raw file that gives the TIFF extension, I got a really strange looking file that was totally unusable. Pretty much everything in the picture that was below middle gray went to almost straight black. Very dark, very high contrast. Um, when I opened it in Photoshop, it didn't open up the way a raw file does using the camera raw. Um, dialog, it uh, just opened up like a norm, an ordinary TIFF picture, and so that didn't seem right. Well, when I looked around some more in the settings, I found that um, if I cl click TIFF file, we have um, some other choices down here, and one of them says PD, or one of them says raw file under TIFF, and then there's another one that says TIFF DNG format. Well, this one down here is the one we already found out doesn't work. Um, but then there's TIFF DNG format. Well, DNG is a raw file format. So let's 
unclick TIFF profile and click TIFF DNG. Um, now we see the file extension that's going to use for our file name ends in .dng, just like you would expect a raw file to. Um, the file type should be um, 48-bit RGB and that should give you, that will give you a file that's usable. Now I did a test of this and I got an actual DNG file that I could open up and work as though it were a raw file from a digital camera. Um, I'm not going to go ahead and scan it right now um, because that's time consuming to go through the process of doing the preview scan and the final scan. If you need to know how to do that you can look at the, at the um, color slide scanning video that I've done already. Let's go ahead and go to Photoshop and, or to Lightroom that is, and look at the file that I got from this. I did find one interesting thing. When I tried to, end, when I tried to open this DNG file in Photoshop, it crashed my computer every time. I did it three times in a row and each time when I opened it in Photoshop my, my Mac completely locked up. It wouldn't do anything until I pulled the plug on it. I don't know why that is um, and I don't know if that'll happen in other people's computers or in Windows. My Mac Pro that I'm using is a pretty old one. It's a 2008 model so I need to get a newer one and it, I'm not sure if that has anything to do with it or not but um, I decided that since it wasn't letting me open it in Photoshop I would try to use Lightroom and the version of Photoshop I'm using and the version of Lightroom I'm using are both the current versions. I've, I'm using the Adobe Creative Cloud and I've got the current fully updated versions of both of them. So it's not that I have an old version of Photoshop or anything like that either. When I tried to open them in Lightroom, they worked perfectly. And if we go in here to Lightroom, i got to find the right folder again here raw scanning. Here we go. Okay. Um, here's the files in Lightroom. This one is the uh, raw file that had the TIFF extension. And you can see this is this is a terrible, almost totally unusable mm -hmm. um, image. Even if we use Lightroom's controls to lighten the shadows and stuff, it, you just can't get them lightened enough. Everything is still going to look terrible on it. Um, we can try the exposure settings. Actually, that that comes pretty close to looking pretty good, but I would be afraid that if you have an image with a lot of real dark stuff on it, you may not be able to recover enough detail. Um, let's look at the one that was the DNG file. Okay, this is the DNG version. Now, I've done a little bit of work to this. Um, let me reset the settings on this back to the default so that we can go through it again. Okay, the uh, the DNG one um, was probably is a little bit too light and the other one was too dark, but this one here is a lot more um, I think usable as far as as far as correctable. Um, for exposure, we'll turn that down a little bit. Um, raise the shadows up a little bit using the shadow slider. Um, see where our sky's at. It's still pretty light. Let's darken the highlights slightly using the highlight slider. And that actually looks pretty good. The tonality is real nice with it. There's nothing blown out. There's nothing that's that's blocked up in the shadows. Um, the color balance is a matter of, of personal opinion. I think this is a little bit too cool looking compared to what the original scene looked like when I was there. I shot this picture, man, almost 20 years ago, and I still remember what it looked like. So let's increase the yellow a little increase the magenta too so we can get a little little warmer, a little redder look. And maybe it went a little too far, I'm not sure. Some of the trees are starting to look a little purple. So yeah, I think that looks pretty good. So that, that's my recommendation. If you're going to use the raw scans in view scan, use the uh, um, click TIFF file and then click TIFF DNG format. Don't choose the one that just says raw file. You have to do the TIFF DNG format in order to get a real DNG file that you can edit in Lightroom. 
Um, try it in Photoshop and see if it'll let you open it in your Photoshop. For some reason, as I said, it crashed my old computer, so uh, Lightroom worked just fine for me. I was able to export the file from Lightroom after I did the uh, corrections in here. I exported then a regular TIFF file from this in Lightroom and it opened fine in Photoshop with the DNG file for some reason. It, it would open, but then the computer would freeze and it wouldn't let me do any corrections to it. And it wouldn't let me close Photoshop or do any other software. I had to basically pull the plug on the computer. So this opens up an interesting new an interesting new possibility. If you've got scans, if you've got slides you want to scan that have um, you know exposure issues, maybe they're underexposed or overexposed, or you've got areas that's got shadow areas or too dark, too much contrast. Doing the scan as a DNG allows you to use Lightroom's um, highlight and shadow and exposure sliders, um, which you can do this with a TIFF file, but the quality is going to be a little bit better if you start out with a, with a with an actual raw file like a DNG. So this uh, this is just another tool that you have when you're doing slide scanning, and I'm glad that I was asked about it because I had never gotten around to trying it before. I think this is something I'm going to start using again quite a bit.